In this video, I'm gonna run through everything that's required to connect a MultiPlus to a laptop, uh, in this case, a MacBook, and configure its, uh, its settings. Now, there are some limitations with this at the moment, um, so it's important to check the manual to find out what those are, but let's get started. You're gonna require an MK3 to USB interface. This is available from Victron and is a specialist part. The USB side will connect into your laptop. On the other side, there's a VE bus port. You can use a regular network cable for this, RJ45 UTP. Victron can supply this, and we recommend using a manufactured cable. This cable connects to the VE bus port on the MultiPlus. Now, this is a, a small multi, so there's only one VE bus port. If you've got a bigger multi which has two VE bus ports, it can connect to either of them. So I'm going to click that in. You can hear it has a nice positive click and it stays securely in place. Now I'm going to connect the other end of the cable into the Mark 3 to USB interface. Again, solid click. And finally, the Mark 3 to USB, USB into the laptop. From here, I can open up uh, Victron Connect. Firstly though, I'm going to need to turn the unit on. So it needs to be connected to power. It can be connected either through the AC input or through the DC power supply on a battery. So if I switch it on, the unit fires up and it's now on. I'll now go and open up Victron Connect. Victron Connect is now opening. It'll take a few moments to open up. Uh, Victron Connect until now has been used to work with Bluetooth devices. So it'll do a Bluetooth scan and sweep and see if it can find any Bluetooth things to connect to. Um, but in this case, we want to connect to a, a V bus device. Uh, it'll do that second. So once it's finished doing its scan, you'll see the device appear on the device list. Let's just wait a moment, see if it comes up. Okay, you can now see the V bus device is retrieving data. It's now found the model. So the MultiPlus in this case, MultiPlus 12 volt, 500 VA, 2016. I can click the unit and it'll open me up to the overview screen. Now this screen is displaying information about what's happening inside the unit. So we can see the AC input voltage, the AC output voltage, the battery voltage, the battery current, and the system state of charge. There's also a few other settings we can play with here. The AC input current limit. Now you can only access this setting if the remote um, current limit is enabled, and I'll show you how to change that setting in a second. In this case, it is enabled, so I can set the input current limit. The on-off switch, so this is the soft switch, um, di different from the physical hardware switch on the front, and typically we'd want to leave this one on, but it means we can set this system, I can turn it off from here. You'll see the system is now off, um, it's still consuming some small amount of standby power, and I can still connect to it through Victron Connect. I'll switch it back on again. There it comes back on again. I can also switch it to charger-only mode in this menu. Now in this case, there's no AC input connected, so it's not going to turn the charger on. But if an AC input was connected, charger mode would now be enabled. I'll switch it on again. In each stage, you can see the mode change in the app as well. So if we want to change some settings, we're connected to the Mark 3D USB adapter. We can open up the settings. At this stage, the settings have been disabled. Now this is for a safety feature to make sure that unqualified users aren't able to change their settings. So it is protected by a password. This password is available from your Victron distributor or at Victron training sessions. Once we've entered the password, we can now access the settings. You can also save the settings to a file or import settings from a file. You can also view product info, including firmware updates. In this case, this unit is now out of date. So I will perform a firmware update. We're gonna go from version 4.3.1 to version 4.5.9. By clicking the firmware update, it takes me here. It automatically knows this model number and the latest firmware file comes included with Victron Connect, so no internet is required. When I click the unit, it warns me that all settings will be wiped when undertaking this firmware update. 
now performing the update. You'll see the uh, progress screen increase as the percentage counts across. The multi will switch off for this firmware update stage, so you'll lose power coming out of it, as well as the settings. It's not essential to update the multi to the latest firmware. Typically, it's done if there's a reason to. If it's a new installation, you should definitely bring new installations to the current firmware. But if you already have an existing system that's working well, it's fine to leave the existing firmware on the multi in, unless you have a reason to change it. The firmware update's now complete. The unit switches back on. The software tells me it's been completed and I can click continue. I'll need to now reconnect to the unit as well. It's going to take me back to the main screen. It'll again perform the Bluetooth sweep and then the scan for the Mark III. You can perform a rescan by clicking this refresh button down the bottom right. Victron Connect is available for Windows, for Macs. It's also available for iOS and Android, but there are limitations with those mobile devices. So iOS doesn't accept uh, external interfaces through the USB port, so you can't use a Mark III to USB. Uh, you can use iOS to connect to the VBus smart dongle. So the MultiPlus has now reappeared, so I can click it again. It's going to get my settings for me. Once again, we're in the overview screen. You can see it loading the data in there. Again, my settings are disabled because I've reset it. It's now fetching the settings. Okay, the settings have now all been loaded from the multi. And let's have a little look through. Now, I'm not going to run through each setting now because each setting is also itemized and detailed in extensive detail in the Victron Connect for VE Bus manual. But you can see all settings are available here. If a setting isn't available, for instance, the grid code, this is not yet supported. You still need to use VE Configure to set it. You'll get a notification. But most of the basic settings required to initially set up your MultiPlus are in here. Victron Connect will continue to be updated and more features added as time goes on. Uh, this is the first big step to get the MultiPluses now connected in. You can also find a help and manual section down the bottom with links to valuable information. Once you're done and your, set, your multi is all set up and configured, you can safely disconnect it. And you're ready to go back to work. Thank you.